That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid. I want to make very clear here. I am doing the Daily Dose of Stupid, and it is featuring a clip of this person. But I am not suggesting that the person herself is stupid, and I'm talking about Greta, the 16-year-old girl who was speaking recently to the UN. Now, what she's saying is incorrect, but I'm... I'm not calling her directly stupid, and I'll explain why here in a little bit. So here's the clip of her speaking to the UN. My message is that we'll be watching you. <laughs> Awkward clap. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I agree. I should be back in school I agree. on the other side of the ocean. Yet... You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil, and that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up. And change is coming, whether you like it or not. All right, so first thing you need to know about Greta, her father is a director, and her mother is a actress in the opera. Now, granted, you would think that she would be a little bit better at acting, considering that background, but, you know, you have to, children actors, you know how it is. But here's something that I find even more frightening. I think that she was obviously overacting there, and it's an over-dramatization for sure. However, I don't believe that the sentiment underlying that is completely false. In other words, what I'm saying here is, I think that she is laying it on thick, but I think she really does believe what she's saying. I don't think that that's insincere. And I think that she really does have a emotional reaction to the things that she's saying. She's just laying it on thick for the cameras. She's putting on the show essentially that her parents want her to. And I hate that for her, but she is being used as a pawn. She's essentially a mascot. And because of that, I think that we need to be cautious in the way that we approach our response to this. And that's the reason why I said she's not actually the source of the stupid. Stupid is being put on display there for sure, but it's not coming from her. It's coming from the adults surrounding her. It's coming from her parents. It's coming from those on the left that are using her. And it's coming from the adults sitting around the table taking her seriously. She's a child, and just because her ideas are incorrect and the things that she's saying are way off base, 
I think that actually the people that are being stupid, the ones that we should actually focus and zero in on, are the people that should be the mature adults in the room that are sitting there and taking her seriously. That's the really stupid part of all of this. And I do believe, genuinely, that this thing borders on child abuse. They're putting this little girl up in front of everybody, and it is irresponsible to do this. First of all, I don't think that it's a good idea to give somebody that fame and notoriety, especially in an arena that is as toxic as politics. Now, I'm not saying that she should be silenced. I'm not saying that anybody should intervene. I still believe in free speech. But I'm saying, as a parent, I believe it to be irresponsible for them to have their daughter do this and to prop her up this way. And it's irresponsible for the other liberals, the other people that are doing this and taking her seriously and putting her in the limelight like this. I think that it's actually far more harmful and far more abusive the beliefs that they are filling this girl's head with. It is irresponsible to constantly bombard a child with the idea that the world is going to end and they're going to die very soon. And that there's a large contingency of evil people that are just doing this because they're selfish and want her to die. And that seems to be what she believes based on her reaction to all of this. When I was a kid, I was terrified that zombies or vampires, either one, I, was, I went through phases but at one point I was really scared of vampires and later I was scared of zombies. But the point is, there was a time where I was very scared of these things. I was a little kid. And when you're a little kid and you watch things on TV, it kind of blurs the line between reality and fiction because you're a child and you don't always understand the difference. The best thing that the adults in my life did for me at that point, the best thing that they did for me, was to dismiss these fears as ridiculous. Doesn't mean they treated my fear as though it was insincere. They showed empathy for me being afraid, and they heard me out and listened to my fears. But ultimately, my parents dismissed these things as foolish because those things don't exist. And they should have. The fact that they dismissed it as ridiculous helped me grow out of it. This is a child that has had her fears confirmed and that these boogeymen lurking just under her bed are real and her parents are telling them that they are real. This boogeyman of this apocalyptic, as she put it, mass extinction event, her parents have reinforced that and scared this child to death. That is child abuse. That is psychological child abuse. And her parents should be ashamed of themselves for allowing that to continue, especially based off of something that isn't real. Can you imagine, for example, if this were a religious kid, and her parents had been bombarding her her entire life with the idea that she is going to go to hell. This was the kid of a fire and brimstone preacher that went to one of those congregations that that's constantly all they talk about is people going to hell, and if you essentially step one toe out of line... Your uh, God's just basically standing there waiting to thump people. And that that's the kind of God that, believe me, I've seen sermons like this in, in certain churches, that they have people so scared that they're, they're really trying to scare people into obeying the gospel. Can you imagine how the media would react if it were a kid like this, going up in front of people, being given a platform, telling everybody that they're going to go to hell, and they're scared to death of this because of what their parents have taught them. There would be people on the left saying that that is child abuse. And they would be right, by the way. So, really, I think that you put on display a real double standard when you point that out. But if I could give my advice to people, don't take the bait. To my fellow conservatives, my friends, my brethren, people on the right. Don't take the bait. If you want to talk about the stupidity of the people surrounding her, okay, I think that that's an acceptable message. Don't counteract her directly. It's unwise. And the reason that it is unwise 
is because she's a kid. She is not mature enough to handle this fight. She obviously doesn't have the emotional stability or maturity for it. And that's not necessarily her fault. She's 16. She's a teenage girl. They make everything dramatic. I mean, yes, she's literally talking about an end of a world, but to a girl, not getting the right prom dress is the end of the world in a lot of situations. I'm not saying that there aren't 16-year-olds that aren't more mature and more stable, but I'm just saying, on average, let's be honest, teenage girls are a very dramatic creature, by and large. And she is kind of blowing things out of proportion, just like most teenage girls do, and so that should be taken into consideration. But if you go dunking on a kid, I mean, yes, I could rhetorically destroy her points. They're ridiculous. Not going to do that. And the reason I'm not going to be, do that is because the correct way to respond to this is that she's a child. And rhetorically destroying a child shouldn't score you any brownie points. It makes you look like a bully. You ever seen that Seinfeld episode where Kramer is talking about how well he's doing in karate and gives advice to Elaine, and then Elaine goes by and checks out his karate school and finds out he's the only adult in the class. <laughs> he's been beating, essentially beating up a bunch of kids, and that's where all his confidence comes from. That's the same thing here. It's not a good look for somebody to rhetorically destroy a little kid. And because of that, even if you win the debate, which granted isn't hard to do based on the things that she's saying, then all you do is you look like you're picking on little kids. That's it. It's not a wise thing to do. And that's why I say that we ought to refrain from this. You see, the left is making the mistake of taking her seriously. The left is making the mistake of treating her as though she is an adult and the things that she is saying are relevant. Let's not make the same mistake. Let's not engage. The only way to win this game is to step back on this one. There are plenty of stupid adults that we can go after on this issue that are saying boneheaded things. I mean, you look at the seven-hour climate debate, that thing was a freaking cornucopia of stupid. And those are people that are actually running for president that might have some real influence on this issue in the future, many of them senators, that kind of thing. That's the people you go after. You don't have a fight with a kid. You see, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is one of those scenarios where I think both actually apply. We need to be wise to not merely engage, just like you know we should have done in large part with the Parkland kids, not taking them seriously, not treated them as though they were an actual viable source of information. The best thing to do in that case would have been to not engage in a lot of ways but also to be as harmless as doves, to show, look, we're not out for blood. We don't want to embarrass kids. We'll have this discussion with somebody that actually has some expertise on the matter and leave it at that. This is a case that the Bible's advice to be wise as serpents as harmless as doves really applies. <laughs> Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel, but the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.